Hello, welcome to my kitchen. Today I am frying some chicken. I'm frying chicken fingers. And let me tell you, it is easy, simple, and delicious. In Dothan, Alabama, there are almost as many fried chicken places as there are churches. And let me tell you, it's a lot. We have every chain imaginable. We have Kentucky Fried, we have Popeyes, we have Chick-fil-A, we have Zaxby's, Bojangles, Gunther's, Jack's, just to name a few. And I pass them all up to come home and make it myself because it is that good. Now I'm starting with chicken tenderloins. They come in a package like this and they are the easiest and quickest to cook and they always turn out delicious. Now, I mean to tell you, this is one easy recipe. I've got a Ziploc bag and what I'm doing is taking my chicken tenderloins and I'm gonna pop them right in the bag. If you've seen my video on how to fry the perfect pork chop, you are gonna see basically the same technique with this chicken. It's easy, it's simple, and it is so good. Now, set this aside, and I'm gonna shake these down to the bottom of the bag, and then I have some buttermilk. This is whole buttermilk. If you can't find whole buttermilk, then low fat will do. But the whole buttermilk is better, I just have to say. And I am going to pour in about a quarter of a cup. I don't need a lot. I just need enough to cover all of the tenderloins and get them nice and wet so that the breading will stick. So here we go. I'm gonna shake these up. Just give them a nice little massage. And that is it. I'm gonna squeeze some of this air out. And I'm gonna put these aside. Now before I start on my breading, I'm gonna go ahead and start heating up my oil. I have got some recycled oil and since I'm only gonna fry one batch, the recycled oil is perfect. This is peanut oil that I have salvaged, and I am gonna put this on the bottom of my frying pan and bring it up one finger, just enough to come up alongside of the chicken diggers. If you're interested in recycling your oil, which I strongly suggest that you do, especially since food prices are going up, 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 check out my video. It will show you just how to do that. Now, I'm putting this on a good medium high heat. And that's gonna take probably three to four minutes to heat up to temperature. If you're one that likes to use a thermometer for oil, you're going to heat this up to about 350 degrees. Now, next for our breading, I have some White Lily self-rising flour. It's super important that you use self-rising, and the reason why is the baking powder. The baking powder gives it a light texture and just a real crispy coating. If you don't have self-rising flour, then add about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half to your all-purpose flour, and you'll have your self-rising flour. I'm only cooking a few tenderloins, so I am gonna start with a cup of flour, and I think that that's gonna be more than enough. And, I've got some seasoned salt, and I'm gonna put in about two teaspoons. And something that I forgot to say, if you like an extra spicy chicken, then add a little Tabasco sauce or cayenne pepper to your buttermilk. That will give you just a little kick, and it's so, so good. All right. 
Now, I'm gonna shake this up. And voila. That is all the mixing that we need to do. Now, I am going to take these chicken tenders out of this buttermilk. I'll leave it sometimes up to 30 minutes and it's perfectly fine. I wouldn't go any longer than 30 minutes because it'll change the texture of the chicken. The tenderloins are already very tender. If you're frying chicken, then you can actually soak your chicken, your bone-in chicken, in your buttermilk for up to two hours because that needs a little bit more love. Now, I am just gonna throw this away. And look, I hardly had any waste at all. I love that, waste not, want not. Now I'm closing my bag and I'm gonna give these a really good shake. Those look just right. Now, I am just feeling up my oil. I like to put my hand over it and because I've done this so long, I can tell about how hot it needs to be. That's what happens when you cook a lot and you have a little bit of experience, you just kind of learn. Now, to find out if this is really hot enough, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of my flour into my frying pan. And if it bubbles up, then I know it's ready. This needs just a few more seconds. I'm gonna try my first piece. Now I wanna show you something. Just kinda of shake off that extra flour and look at all those craggly pieces. This is gonna be so good. And there's a smooth side and a craggly side. I always put the crackly side down because that's going to tend to be a little bit crispier. And in it goes. My oil is perfect. Now, let me see if I can get them all in the pan. See? Crackly side. Got a little bit left over. So in hindsight, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got seven tenders. So maybe a half of the cup would have been better. My favorite thing to use for frying is a little thin fork. I feel like it's just easy to maneuver, much better than tongs. Now I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Make sure that that's all nice and centered. You'll find when you're frying that you're gonna have a hot spot. And usually that heat source is gonna come up the strongest through the middle of the pan. So they might not all be done at the same time, even though you put them in at the same time. Just keep an eye on them. Now, I like to drain my chicken on a rack. I don't like putting anything fried directly on a paper towel because I feel like it still soaks up a little bit of the grease. So I line a little baking pan with a paper towel, then I put my rack on top of it. I love these temple things because I can shape it around my rack and it fits perfectly. Now I can tell that it is getting about ready to turn because the sides are getting cooked. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but let me show you. See how that's starting to turn white? I'll flip these over. Just the ones that are in the center. Like I said, they're getting done a little bit faster. These really don't take any longer than about four to five minutes to cook. 
They're going to cook maybe two to three minutes on each side. So I guess that's four to six minutes, I should say. It, don't overcook them. Just cook them long enough till they get nice and golden brown. I think these are looking perfect. I just want to show you. Ooh, look at that. Mm -hmm. So, this looks so delicious. Now, I'm just going to let that oil drip off a little bit. And then on my tray they go. Look how crispy and golden brown these got. Like I said, why would I want to stop at one of those chicken places when I can have the best fried chicken ever right here? You know, I did a video of this. Mm, it's been almost two years ago. And I made a Chick-fil-A type sandwich with them. And I will say, they're absolutely delicious. And if you have any leftovers, heat these up in the air fryer and they'll crisp right back up. My husband loves to make chicken sandwiches out of these when he comes home for lunch. And some of this leftover oil and these drippings will make a delicious gravy. I'm just going to take this put it right back there and let it cool down. Get this out of our way. Now for this delicious chicken. Now I've got seven chicken tenders here and they cost a little bit over four dollars so not much at all now i need to leave these to cool for just a minute because they are smoking hot in the meantime i am going to grab something i'll meet you back here in a few look what i've got who needs to go to chick-fil-a when you can go and buy the sauce now to cool this down just a little bit. I'm going to use the sauce. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Oh my goodness. Y'all, these are so good. You've got to give them a try. Listen. If you've been afraid to fry your own chicken, start with these. It takes the intimidation factor right out of it. Oh my goodness, and I promise once you make these, you're not gonna go through that drive-through near as often, and that's a guarantee. Thanks for watching my video. You're a blessing to me. I appreciate you so much. Listen, will you visit my Facebook page, Kathy Southern Kitchen, or my YouTube page, Kathy Southern Kitchen. Follow me and you'll get notifications when I upload a video, which is usually once a week. Mm. Well, I'm gonna go finish this piece. It's calling my name. And the rest of these will be for dinner tonight. My husband's going to be excited about that. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you next time.